Hey guys, it's Jessica again. Uh, today I'm going to show you the differences between all of the different sizes and shapes of the United States Postal Service priority mailboxes. Uh, these are the ones that are uh, you can get for free at the post office in usually the entryway um, or the lobby or you can order them online in bulk and they'll send you a pack of 10 or 15 or 25 I believe. Uh, so these are the different sizes. So I use these a lot because it's pretty much an accurate, um, if I'm listing something on eBay and I know the weight of the item, it pretty much is spot on for the amount um, because the dimensions are given on the outside of the box. So uh, the first box I'm going to start with is this tiny box, which when you're ordering these supplies or picking them up at the post office, it's very important to not make the mistake of grabbing priority mail flat rate boxes or ordering pri priority mail flat rate um, boxes on their website because unfortunately if you do ship with the flat rate boxes, that means that it's a flat rate up to 70 pounds, uh, I think 108 inches in girth, which is the longest side around. Um, you have to ship, you must use flat rate shipping if you use those boxes. So it's very important that you don't choose flat rate shipping boxes unless you plan on shipping something that's really heavy but will fit into a box that's one of these sizes. So um, I showed you the flat rate envelope, which is uh, very popular to use for um, certified documents or things that uh, need two to three days for shipping. Um, lots of stuff can go in here. You can even ship, I've, I've shipped contact lenses before um, in these to my boyfriend who had forgotten them. Uh, documents, like I said, uh, bracelets, any kind of jewelry that's not really fragile, um, a retainer, anything that needs to be quickly shipped uh, that can fit in here. This is a flat rate envelope. I think that the shipping price maybe is $6.25 for this envelope. All right, so this is one of my favorites. This is the priority mail non-flat rate, so just regular priority mail shipping envelope, which is big enough to put a lot of things in. The good thing about this is that one, it's 100% uh, made out of recycled material. Yeah. Yeah, all of this material is made out of recycled, recycled, partially recycled material. So that's one thing we know that you can always recycle it and reuse it again or put it in the recycling bin and then it won't go into the landfill, it'll go into the recycling center and be reused again. Uh, also, if you get any of these in the mail, if you are able to cover the label um, that was shipped when you received it, the lab label that was shipped to you, you can just put a new label right over it and ship it wherever it needs to go if the box is in decent condition still. So these boxes are great. Once again, they're free because they expect you to use priority mail shipping uh, services with any of these boxes. You're not allowed to use uh, United States Postal Service uh, Parcel Select or Media Mail or um, U USPS Ground, Retail Ground uh, with any of these. It must be the priority mail. So that's very important to remember. Uh, once you get the hang of this, I promise it's not as difficult as it looks. I know they all look pretty much the same. But I have some shortcuts that will really help you. So back to this envelope. This envelope is basically made so that it won't tear. It's very hard to tear this envelope. So you can shove it full of whatever you want um, as long as you know it's, it's measured by weight. So um, with that said, one of the most important things I would recommend if you are going to start using this shipping material is to purchase a scale. I think I bought the scale for maybe $32 or $29 on Amazon. It's made by Waymax and it's really great. Uh, you can turn it on and set the mode and it, it uh, goes to zero pounds, zero ounces. It's not 
I'd say it's 99% accurate. However, sometimes if it's under one pound, it has trouble registering uh, something, but it's really great. So you can just set it on the ground. If you're going to do a shipment online, USPS.com, I'll walk you through that later. Uh, wrap up your, your package and you just set it on here. Weigh it, take that weight, enter it into your USPS shipping label creation online and uh, print it and, and slap it on the, the front of the, one of these things and you can even set the US or the United States Postal Service your mail per, or your mailman or mail woman uh, you can set it outside your door and they'll pick it up during normal delivery uh, normal postal delivery Monday through Saturday um, they'll pick it up from right outside of your door so that's a really good plus or you can drop it off at the post office and if it's already pre-labeled then you just set it either set it in a pile put it in the container that you can pull open or you can wait in line to hand it to one of the customer service representatives at the post office so anyhow um so this tiny box it's not really that tiny but this is let's see on it it says most of these boxes say Maybe this one doesn't. This is a good box for if you're shipping uh, video games or DVDs or anything that's, you know, this size. Uh, the, I, what I've done for these boxes is I've, I've made a box, like put it together for each one of these sizes. Uh, and then I wrote the dimensions like this so I can easily pick it up and go, hmm, no, that won't fit in here. Or, hmm, I think it'll fit in here. So I kind of have an idea when I walk into my office and look for, I'm looking for a box, I have an idea of what will and won't fit for the most part because of the dimensions. Also, it helps uh, when you're filling out your USPS.com shipping label online because it, it asks for spe specific dimensions and the dimensions with the weight combined, it all calculates a different price depending on where it's going. So. It's very important that you have the right dimensions and you don't underestimate the dimensions or the weight. So this is the first box and this is 9 and 7 16 inches by 6 and 7 16 and then it's 2 and 3 16 inches which is a little hard to, I usually round up so I'd say it's 10 by 7 by 3 uh, is the dimensions of this box. That's the easiest way to do it. Then you know that you're not uh, underpaying or you're you are being undercharged and they might come back to you and say you didn't pay enough for shipping um, so I usually just round up so that's the first box uh, next box is let's do this little booger right here which is a square and it's really super cute I think uh, seven point let's see Outer dimensions are seven and a quarter, seven and a quarter, six and a half. So I guess it's not perfect square, but uh, a lot of things will fit in here diagonally, which I think is great. Um, if you're shipping any small products that are you know tiny and there a bunch of them can fit in here, this is a really good option. Um, let's see, Christmas ornaments, anything that's small, handmade crafts, uh, really good with this box. This is a really sturdy material, so it's it's. Uh, I'd say it's, it's, it's one of my favorite boxes and one, probably one of my most used boxes just because so much stuff will fit in here. So many different sizes and shapes of things. I've actually shipped an a iPhone that I sold on eBay in this with just packaging surrounding it. So it was very comfortably placed inside of here. This is a really good box. So once again, this is the uh, 7 seven and a quarter seven and a quarter six and a half or seven by seven by six box priority mail non-flat rate and all of the boxes when they're shipped to you will come in a big stack and there'll be plastic around them and they'll be secured with a, a band um, so i like that they come flat so you can just store them away i have one of those big ikea organizers in my office it's got i think I don't know, 20 cubbies and they're all, I just put these in and I can just take them out and then I can create boxes um, on an as needed basis rather than having to create all the boxes and just having them sit around. Uh, next up, this 
is a great box for shoes. Um, any kinds of shoes, boots are the one thing that might not fit in here, but as you can see, it's pretty deep. So this is actually, I think if you're on the United States Postal Service website and you're looking for boxes, this will actually, yeah, actually it says shoe box, August 2015. So each revision of the box, um, each revision of the box that USPS does as they print new boxes uh, will be written when, what kind of box it is normally, or at least the dimensions, and um, when the date was, so that it's just for reference. So anyways, this is a really great shoe box. So what I do is, say I'm shipping a pair of, I don't know, heels. Um, they're about three inches or something. So I wrap them up in paper, and I have a U-Haul uh, paper that I, I lift it up, and then I, it's kind of like tissue paper. I wrap up each shoe, and I put them in here as if they were going to be in a, in a shoe box. Uh, but first, I take some tissue paper and I wrap it up and then I shove it down here to create padding. I put the shoes in and then I take more tissue paper and I crumple it up and I put some on the, on the very end so that when I go like this, when the box is closed, you don't hear it moving around. So it really protects what's inside of this box, especially shoes. And if they have any value at all, you definitely want to protect them. So this is the shoe box. These two boxes are a little confusing because they're very similar in size, as you can see. Um, one is just under 14 inches wide, or long, excuse me. One is just under, just over 15 inches long.